Today, I'll be talking about POSH, a data-aware shell. This is joint work with Sajad Fuladi and my advisors, Phil Levis and Matei Zaharia. We all do many data processing steps at the shell with various command line tools to pre-process and post-process data. This includes running simple bash text utilities like cat and grep and awk to search for lines in a file that match a particular pattern or using image processing tools like ImageMagick to take an image and turn it into a thumbnail. Finally, we all use some sort of version control to keep track of our software, commonly Git, from the command line. We sometimes might want to run these applications on data stored remotely to process gigabytes of logs produced by remote web servers or to pre-process large data sets before passing them onto machine learning tasks. One way to do this is with remote file systems, which enable us to preserve our local development environment. However, for applications that are more I.O. heavy than compute heavy, which is the case for some of these shell applications, they can be much slower when running over remote storage, such as NFS. We saw that for a client and NFS server in the same GCP region, operating on a 0.5 gigabyte size folder slowdowns from 6 to 100x for three common I.O. heavy applications, tar, git, and copy recursive. Consider what's happening with this developer trying to run this tar extract command over this remote NFS map. First, the tar program will start running locally, and it'll make remote read requests or read the input tar bulb over the network. The tar program will locally decompress each block and make remote write requests to write back each unzipped file back over the network. This will continue back and forth until the entire folder has been sent back and forth. Running this command over NFS is inefficient because it results in moving the data back and forth between the client and server for relatively little computation at the client. It would be nice if we could run this command closer to the storage without changing the workflow of the developer. Prior systems address this data locality issue by pushing computation closer to the data. However, to use these, users must conform to a specific API, and for simple shell pipelines that use remote files, there might be more overhead than is worth to try to use these systems. So in this talk, can we ask the question, can we bring data locality to the shell? And we present Posh, the process offload shell, a system that automatically offloads portions of unmodified shell pipelines to proxy servers closer to the data. Consider the client from before, trying to run shell applications that access data stored remotely. We propose inserting proxy servers associated with each NFS mount that is closer to the data than the client. These proxies can run on the storage servers themselves or just nearby. Posh decides how to split pipelines into portions that execute locally and on proxies. Here, it'll try to offload commands to run at the proxies, which will execute these commands on behalf of the client and just send back any necessary output to the client, like standard out or standard error. This prevents lots of unnecessary data movement. We're going to start with a small demo to show you exactly how Posh works. On the left side, we have a shell running bash, and on the right side, we have a shell running posh. They're both in the same directory, and this machine has two folders mounted onto NFS. This is a client at Stanford, and the two NFS servers are in GCP Oregon for mount zero and mount one. The command that we're gonna be running is cat of do files pipe to grep. And we're just running ls on the two files here to show you that they're both about three gigabytes large. So in total, CAT is processing about six gigabytes of data. On the left side, I'm gonna start typing in the command, which is just gonna show CAT mount zero demo log CSV, so the first file, then mount one demo log CSV, pipe to grep. The key that we'll be grepping for here is part of an IP address because these happen to be network access logs. Just note, on the left side, as this starts to run, we've augmented cat to show a progress bar of how far 
it is on the computation. So you can see it's progressing data at this rate of about, it's processing data at this rate of about 30 megabytes per second with the full ETA of about three minutes. On the right side, because Posh is a drop-in replacement for Bash, we're gonna type in the same exact command. And in a second, you're gonna see that Posh is gonna finish this computation much faster than Bash because it takes advantage of data locality. Here you can see that Posh is now done while well, Bash is only 15% of the way through the computation. Posh offloads the processes to proxy servers running on each NFS server. And in the meanwhile, Bash is sending all the data from the server to the client. Now that we've seen a demo, let's dig into how Posh works. The key challenge Posh is solving in its design is how does Posh know how to split computation between local execution and proxy servers? To solve this challenge, Posh includes an annotation language that summarizes the command line semantics of each command and its file dependencies. If Posh can understand which command line arguments to each command are files, it can understand the file dependencies of this command and whether it can be offloaded to a proxy. Next, Posh includes a runtime that enables execution and parallelization of shell commands across proxy servers. Finally, Posh includes a scheduling algorithm that decides how to optimally offload and schedule the command across proxy servers to reduce execution time. As a sketch for the rest of the talk, we're gonna talk about our annotations, the system design, the scheduling algorithm, and the evaluation. Let's think a little more in detail about what this annotation interface needs to show. Given this arbitrary pipeline, what does Posh need to know to decide which commands to offload? First, it needs to determine the file dependencies of each command. If the argument output.txt is stored locally, Posh cannot offload the T command. Next, Posh needs a notion of how much data flows between the commands in order to figure out how to reduce data movement. For example, if the arguments to cat are remote, it would be pointless to offload cat but not grep because grep usually produces much less output than input. Finally, in some cases, it might be useful to parallelize commands to either reduce execution time even further or even just enable offloading. For example, the arguments A, B, C, D could be located on different input mounts, each with a different associated proxy server. Posh would not be able to offload parts of this pipeline without splitting cat into multiple portions. Let's dig a little deeper into this first question, how to determine the file dependencies of a command line. Consider these command lines. In the first one, the arguments A, B, C, D are input files to cat while the argument foo is a string for grep. In the tar-c invocation, the argument following dash f is an output file, while the argument after, not preceded by an option, is an input file. However, in number three, the argument after dash f now is an input file, while the output is implicitly the current directory. Similarly, git status also relies on the git metadata in the current directory as a dependency. Without a formal interface that defines which arguments are output files or input files, Posh would have a hard time understanding which commands it can offload. Posh's annotation interface allows developers to specify this information. This annotation for tar-c here includes a list of arguments of which there are three types, flags, parameters preceded by flags, and parameters not preceded by flags. Most of this information is information that something like getopt or argparse would have about parsing the command line interface for tar. But annotations additionally include this type assignment for each argument, so Posh knows which argument strings correspond to files and how these will be used. If you recall, this annotation for tar-c would not work in the case of tar-x, where the argument following dash f is not an output file. So 
Posh allows there to be multiple annotations per command, and it tries one until it finds one that fits the current invocation. Here, you can see the argument for dash F has a different type assignment. Additionally, annotations contain extra metadata about the entire command. In this case, this keyword indicates that the command implicitly needs the current directory. In summary, annotations include argument-specific information, including a type assignment and whether a command can be parallelized across this argument, semantics about the entire command, including parallelization semantics, filtering semantics, and whether the command implicitly needs the current directory. We imagine developers can share and open source annotations, so to use Posh, users need not write their own annotations. Now we'll go through a general system design, the scheduling algorithm, and our evaluation. When a developer types in this arbit arbitrary pipeline at the command line, Posh will take the annotations and generate a DAG representation of the entire pipeline. The DAG includes each command and its metadata from the annotations, as well as IO dependencies from standard in, standard out, and standard error. POSH will then take configuration information, which specifies a mapping between specific client file paths to IP addresses for proxy servers to decide where to run each command. Here, proxy server A can access any files under mount zero, and proxy server B can access any files under mount one. POSH's scheduling algorithm schedules the command, and here it schedules it so cat and grep run on proxy server A, while the write to standard out and standard error stay at the client. This is then executed across the proxy servers and the client's shell to make it look like the whole command had been running locally, as we saw in the demo. We're gonna take a deeper look now into the scheduling step. In the scheduling step, Posh takes a DAG and first tries to automatically parallelize any parts if possible then apprise a greedy location assignment algorithm to produce a DAG that looks like this. We will discuss each of these two steps in turn. Recall annotations contain per argument information and per command information. Here, the annotation for cat indicates that this file argument is splittable, as in a cat node can be split into nodes across this argument in a data parallel way. Grep is splittable across input, so a grep node with multiple input streams can be split across these multiple input streams. In both cases, as long as the output is serialized back in the correct order. So here, Posh takes the cat node and splits it into two nodes based on the input mounts, and then it'll take the two it'll take the two cat nodes and make two grep corresponding grep nodes for each of the two cat nodes. Now we'll go through the greedy location assignment algorithm. First, Posh will assign locations to nodes with any dependencies. These encompass read and write nodes that must read from a specific file or write to a specific file. Next, Posh greedily assigns nodes whose file dependencies are at a single server to the proxy server for that mount. Finally, because nodes that access files from different mounts can only be accessed at the client, these nodes are constrained to run at the client. Next, Posh considers each source to sync path in the DAG and uses heuristics to try to assign each unassigned node along this path. Finally, Posh will resolve any conflicting assignments from nodes that appeared in multiple paths. Let's take a deeper look at number two. Consider a path where the first node has been constrained to run at proxy server A, while the last node has been constrained to run at the client. Posh needs to assign these two unassigned nodes in the middle, grep and word count. To do this, it must have a notion of how much data flows through the command or the edge weights along this path to determine a minimum cut along the path. 
but it can't know the exact edge weights without running the command and seeing how much data grep filters. So instead, Posh uses metadata from the annotation, which specifies if a command is likely to filter its input and produce less output. Posh uses this to determine a relative ordering of the edges. It knows cat doesn't filter, while grep and word count both produce less lines of output than input. So x is greater than or equal to y, which is greater than or equal to z. So now it knows that the minimum cut edge is here, and all of the nodes before the minimum cut should be constrained to run at the source location here at the server, and all the nodes after should run at the sync location at the client. Since the submission, we've been working on more general algorithms that can handle more scenarios. If you're interested, please come talk to me. In Posh's implementation, there's a server component that runs at each proxy server, and each proxy server must have access to NFS data on behalf of the client. There's a client component that runs at the client's shell with annotations stored locally. In our evaluation, we used Posh to accelerate five unmodified shell applications. We ran this with two NFS scenarios, one with the client at Stanford and a server in the nearest GCP region, Oregon, and one with the client and server within the same GCP region. In the experiments we show here, the proxy server runs directly on the NFS server, but our paper has experiments that detail additional scenarios. In the first application, we use Posh to accelerate this image magic command that takes the images inside the images folder and produces thumbnails, which are then stored in the thumbs folder, the argument to dash path. The input data is about 15 gigabytes large, while the output thumbnails end up being about 12 megabytes. This graph shows the latency of running this command over bash over NFS sync and async, local execution while accessing local disk, and posh for the two networks we mentioned previously. Just note, that the local execution is the best possible performance that NFS or Posh could get. Starting on the right side, we see that Posh gives about a 50% benefit over NFS when the client is in the university and the NFS server is in the data center. But in the cloud to cloud network, there is barely an overhead over NFS of NFS over local execution, so Posh does not do any better. This is because in the cloud to cloud network, the data transfer is not a bottleneck, but in the university to cloud setting, the data transfer ends up being a bottleneck for the rate at which the application is processing the images. Additionally, we ran an evaluation where we both offloaded and paralyzed this command in a single proxy server by different factors. The factor determines how many processes Posh splits this into without any change from what the developer is typing. And we see that for up to 16, for a 16 core machine, the latency scales nicely. Next, we revisit the workload from the demo where we run cat and grep across 80 gigabytes of logs stored in five different remote NFS servers. The output data ends up being about 0.8 kilobytes large, so is much smaller than the input data. In both the cloud to cloud and university to cloud setting, we see that Posh gives large benefits, a two to two and a half speed up in the cloud to cloud setting and a 10x speed up in the university to cloud setting. Posh has access to five proxy servers corresponding to each of the NFS servers. Posh enables the speed up by offloading the command to prevent data movement, but it also understands the semantics of the command and automatically splits the command into five portions that execute on each of the proxies in parallel and aggregates the output in the correct order. Finally, we present a git commit workflow with a workflow with the Chromium repository. We rolled this repository by 20 commits saved each patch, and successively applied each 
patch and time each git add, git status, and git commit command. And we see that for add and status, there's a 10 to 15x speedup of posh over bash over NFS. Git repositories typically contain many small files. Commands like status and add check the status of every file to see if it's been modified. This results in NFS making file system requests such as stat for every file. As a comparison, one other application in our eval makes only around 2,500 open and stat calls, but these numbers are in the 34,000 and 340,000 for a Git add. Posh saves on latency by avoiding many round trips. We ran this workload only for a client and server in the same data center because running a Git command for a client outside the data center to a server inside the data center to, took up to two hours as the latencies here are shown in seconds. In summary, we present an argument that shells should consider data locality and we introduce Posh which enables 1.6 to 15x speedups in unmodified workloads that access remote file systems with its annotations. I've listed some ways that you can contact me here as well as the GitHub link to Posh, which is open source with its annotations.